Over the last month and a half, I've spent a lot of time building with GitHub Actions. If you haven't heard of GitHub Actions, it's a code execution tool built right into GitHub's UI. And although classically it's used for things like continuous integration and continuous deployment, that is taking my application's test suite, running through it, making sure everything works, and then deploying it to wherever it needs to go, you can think of GitHub Actions as a place generally to run JavaScript code, whether that's on a schedule or based on events. It's a really powerful platform that does a lot more than I think it is sort of advertised for normally. In this video, we're going to explore GitHub Actions by building a simple bot. So every morning you'll get a message on Telegram or you could replace it with whatever kind of chat provider you want to use. But you'll get a message every single day saying, this is the weather in your area for the day. And it's not a super interesting example, I know, like. There's a million weather bot tutorials, but in this case, I think it'll be interesting to explore GitHub Actions and kind of understand how you would architect something like this using GitHub Actions events and, and sort of execution platform for running JavaScript in particular. So the code will be open source as always. You can find it in the description. I'll link to a GitHub repo where you can check out how all of this stuff works. And with that, let's hop into the code and get started writing our first GitHub Action. Just a quick note, the first part of this video focuses on writing some code that we can deploy, run, and schedule using GitHub Actions. If you just want to see the GitHub Actions code for this project and don't care about the bot and weather configuration, check out the description of this video, which will have timestamps indicating each section of the video. Okay, on to the coding. Let's quickly write down what we need to do for our project. It's a weather bot that will, once a day, send you a message with the weather for your area. Our code will need to, one, make a request to a weather API, two, process that data into a human readable message, and three, send that message using a chat application API. In this case, we'll use Telegram, though in the space of chat apps with nice APIs, we could also use Slack or Discord. Finally, we'll need to schedule this code to run once a day. We'll use GitHub Actions for this. I'll create a new folder called GitHub Actions Weatherbot and run yarn init-y inside of it to create a package.json file. Let's begin by getting the weather data that we need for this project. We'll use open weather map in this project. And unfortunately, you'll need to sign up with an email to get an API that you can use inside of our code. Once you've done that, you'll see on their API page that we have a number of potential APIs that we can call. For this project, the current weather API is probably a good fit. We can look at the overall forecast for the day and send something like the weather today in location has a high of X degrees and a low of X degrees. In our bot directory, let's create a new file called index.js. We'll also install .env, which will allow us to save our various API keys and configuration details outside of our code. We'll also create a new file called .env and put our weather API token inside of it, set to weather underscore API underscore token. When .env runs at the beginning of our code, it will read this file and set the values in it as part of process.env. In index.js, we'll import .env and call .config, which will put everything from .env into process.env. We'll also set the variable weather token to process.env.weatherapi token. Now it's time to make an actual API request to open weather map. Back in browser, copy the API URL. And our code will create a new instance of the URL class, passing in that URL as a string and setting the variable name to weather URL. The URL class is a really powerful tool in the JavaScript standard library for constructing URLs, particularly when it comes to setting query parameters and other aspects of the URL structure. In browser, we can see that there are a ton of different ways to look up a location, latitude and longitude, city name, and zip code. In this case, I'll use zip code, which is in the format zip comma country code. First, I'll use weather URL dot search params dot set passing in my app ID as the key and weather token as the value to authenticate my requests to the weather API. I'll use search params.set to set another param zip set to the value 78747 comma US. Finally, since I'm in the US, I wanna format the temperatures in imperial units. That means Fahrenheit. I'll add one more query parameter using search params.set again. Units set to the string imperial. With my configured URL, I can make a request and parse the JSON that comes back. 
To do that, I'll install Node Fetch, a JavaScript package that brings the Fetch API from the browser into Node. Run yarn add node fetch, and an index.js will import it and assign it to fetch. To make a request, we'll add fetch weather URL to string, which will convert our setup URL into a plain URL string and request it with fetch. Fetch calls return a promise, and while we could handle it by chaining dot then to the end of the call, we can use a more modern approach to JavaScript by leaning on async await, a set of primitives in JavaScript that make it really easy to deal with asynchronous code. Take the fetch call and wrap it in a new function called getWeatherData, which will have the async keyword prefixed to it. Inside of that function, we can add a wait before the fetch call, which will tell Node to wait until that asynchronous function has completed. Let's set the return value of this to resp for response. Call await resp.json and set it to the value body. This will convert the response body into a JavaScript object. Since we know the API response will be JSON, we can safely parse and convert it. After all this, we need to actually call this function. At the bottom of your file, add another function called main, which will represent the entry point or main function that this file will run. This will also be an async function. And inside of it, call await get weather data, setting the response to weather data. For now, we'll simply console log the data we get back. But in the future, we'll parse it and send it to our Telegram bot to send data. At the end of our file, add main and save the file. When we run node index.js, we should see the weather data being returned in console. Congrats, we made a weather API request. Let's look at our data and make a quick function to format it into a string we want to send from our bot. The main field contains temp, temp min, and temp max, which are the current, low, and high temperatures for the day. In addition, there's a weather object with a description string, such as clear sky, and finally, a name string representing the location of the place that we've looked up. Create a new function called generate weather message, which takes an argument weather data. Inside of that, we'll return an ES6 template string, using the data that we've discussed to format a nice human readable string for a bot to send. The result should be something like the weather in Austin, clear sky. Current temperature is 56 degrees with a low temp of 40 degrees and a high of 60 degrees. In main, we can take our weather data and pass it into this new function, setting the return value to weather string. Replace our original console log with that, and when we run the program again, we should have a well-formatted string to send with our bot. Next, let's move on to setting up our bot and sending a test message to our user using Telegram. Note that I've chosen to use Telegram in this project for two reasons. First, it has a straightforward API and a pretty nice JavaScript library. And second, because I legitimately use Telegram day to day. So this is actually a pretty useful project for me to have. In my Telegram app, I need to set up a new application and get an API key for my bot to be able to send messages. In the search bar, search for at botfather. This is Telegram's bot for creating new Telegram apps. When you start a chat with botfather, you'll give your app a display name and a username. And at the end, you'll have a created bot. Make sure to copy the token you'll see as we'll use it for authenticating with your bot inside of our code. And one last thing, click on the username of your bot in that message and start a new chat with it. This effectively allows your bot to send you messages in the future as you've started a conversation with it and it can now send you messages. We also need to get our chat ID to tell the bot where to send messages. There isn't a super clear way to do this, so the best approach I found is to look up the at get underscore ID underscore bot, which will message you back your username and chat ID. This will allow the bot to send you messages directly. In our .n file, we'll add two additional lines, telegram token, which is the token we got from botfather, and telegram chat ID, which is our chat ID. Back in our weather bot directory, let's send our first telegram message to make sure our bot is set up successfully. Install Telegram's JavaScript API by running yarn add node telegram bot API. In index.js, we'll load that Telegram library. Let's instantiate a new bot and pass in our application's token. And note that earlier we authenticated with our bot by starting a new chat conversation. If you were to put in a chat ID that the bot doesn't have access to, you'll get an error back when attempting this call. So it's super important that you follow that step. With our bot set up, it's obviously time to send the weather message. In main, add bot.sendMessage, passing in the chat ID and weather message. Running node index.js will make a weather API request, format it as a human readable string, 
and send it using Telegram and our new bot. This is great, but it's manual. It doesn't run on a schedule and we have to run node index.js to have our bot send us a message. Using GitHub Actions, we can now take this code and run it on a schedule. For instance, every morning before we leave the house. Run git init in this directory. And in addition, let's add a new file called .gitignore, adding the line .env. This will remove that file containing various API keys and secrets that we don't want to put in our repository. This will save us from pushing up credentials into a public GitHub repo. In browser, go to repo.new, which is a little shortcut to forward you to GitHub's new repository page. I'll set up GitHub Actions Weatherbot on my account and copy the two shell lines that it gives me to add a new Git remote to my project and push it up to GitHub. GitHub Actions are enabled on a project by adding a new YAML file, that is .yml, representing your project's workflow. A workflow is a set of steps, each of which can be running a specific predefined action or shell commands. For our workflow, we only have a few steps. First, we'll set up Node, We'll install some NPM dependencies, and then of course we'll run index.js to actually send our message through Telegram. Create a new file in .github slash workflows called action.yaml. Inside of it, we'll set a name field with something like GitHub Actions Weatherbot. We also need to set the on key. This field tells GitHub Actions when to run this workflow, and it's a crucial and powerful aspect of what makes Actions so exciting. The easiest example of how to use this is by simply passing push. This will run your code on every git push to your repository. For our purposes, we want to run this workflow daily. The schedule syntax allows us to pass in a cron style string representing a schedule. If you aren't familiar with cron, check out crontab.guru, which provides a simple UI to define your schedule. The basic syntax for a daily cron job is passing in minutes and hours values and setting day, month, and day of week to the asterisk symbol. For instance, 00 star 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 can be read as every day at 00, that is midnight. The GitHub Actions schedule syntax is in UTC time. So if I want to receive a message every day at 8 a.m. CST, I'll need to pass in 2 p.m. UTC as my cron schedule. Note that time zones and daylight savings time are a factor here. So you may find that at some point during the year, your bot will vary by about an hour forwards and backwards. So you may need to prepare accordingly. Time zones are really fun. I'm just kidding. Back in our workflow, I'll pass in the string 0, 14, star, 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 representing every day at 2 p.m. UTC. You may want to put something different here depending on where you are in the world. In doing this, my workflow will start automatically running right at 8 a.m. CST every single day. Add a top level field jobs and add a new job with the name bot. This will contain our steps for running our code. Add the key steps, which are the list of steps that will run in our workflow. And to begin, we'll use a predefined GitHub action step called setup node, which will install and configure node in our workflow so that we can simply call node index.js. Next, our project has some dependencies. Let's install them by adding a second step using the run key, which will allow us to execute some shell commands. In this case, we'll just pass npm install. Finally, let's run our project with another step using the run key again and passing in node index.js. So we'll run the file directly with node just like we've done locally. One thing we need to consider here is the usage of environment variables in our project. Remember that we have the .env package locally and a corresponding .env file in our project. In our GitHub Actions workflow, we'll need to pass in our API tokens and credentials when we run node index.js so that it can properly authenticate. Luckily, GitHub Actions has a great solution to this via the env key in a step. Each entry under env will be a key value pair. Looking at .env locally, we have three keys, weather API token, telegram token, and telegram chat ID. Now comes another question. Do we just put these values directly into our workflow? In doing so, we would put them in plain text directly inside of our repository. Don't do this. Instead, use GitHub's secrets feature, which allows you to save secret values for your repository, encrypted and inaccessible except inside of GitHub workflows. For each env key in this workflow, we'll set the value to secrets.key. For instance, secrets.weatherapi token, secrets, telegram token, etc. Back in browser, go to the settings page for your repository and select secrets on the sidebar. On this page, we'll add each corresponding key and value. 
These values will be encrypted, not available in your project source, or even generally accessible to you, the repository owner, or viewers of your project. They're only decrypted and accessible in the context of your GitHub workflow. We're on the home stretch, and with our environment variable set, we can save this workflow and get ready to push this code and new GitHub Actions workflow up to GitHub. Three quick things to fix. First, we're going to add the cron key on schedule. We're also going to add the runs on key inside of our step. And finally, the checkout step, which will actually check out our repository when we run the action. Finally, I'll commit this new workflow and push it up to GitHub. If this is the first time the Actions has run for this repository, it may take a minute to initialize. Once it's set up, the Actions tab in your repository will contain every time your workflow has run with an indication of whether it's successful or whether it's failed. Our workflow will set up Node, install our dependencies, and if we did everything correctly, make an API request to open Weather Map. It'll format the response and send it as a Telegram message via our bot. And with that, we've made a GitHub Actions project that executes code every day, sending the information it gathers via a Telegram bot directly to you. If you're interested in the code, check out the repository I created in this video at github.com slash signalnerve slash github actions weather bot. If you take this code and make something else interesting with it, let me know in the comments. I'm super excited about GitHub Actions and I'm gonna continue to explore what I can build with it on this channel. Leave a comment if you have something you'd like to see build, and of course, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks, and see you next time.